Hi there, it's Monday morning. Welcome to Mania TV. Ronaldo, Messi and Thierry Henry to come. But we start with England, who are still doing the business in their bid to reach the World Cup. Analysis from our chief football writer Martin Lipton on their big qualifying decider against Croatia to come. But first, a quick look at the papers and how they reflected on a big weekend of football. The Sun has the words of the Croatia coach Slaven Bilic on their back page. He's having a go at England captain John Terry for his condemnation of Eduardo's dive two weeks ago. The Star has the devil of a deal. Uh, more allegations about the young player at La Havre that Manchester United are accused of tapping up. United, of course, denied the allegation. The Express looks at the chances of the Republic of Ireland, who faced Bulgaria in a crunch clash on Wednesday before a decider against group leaders and world champions Italy. The Mail keep the focus on England. This piece saying here that we've looked good in qualifying before, only to come unstuck at the main event. Now we will see if we really are the real deal under Capello. The Times says that even though Jermaine Defoe came off the bench to score his fifth England goal in three games against Slovenia, he will still be on the bench for Wednesday's game as Capello will stick with Heskey. In the Telegraph, the Slovenian player is still angry with Rooney over the incident that led to him being awarded a penalty. It wasn't a penalty for me, but I want to know what you think. Did Rooney dive or was it the fault of the referee? Should Rooney get the same ban as Eduardo or is he the innocent party in all this? Let me know on YouTube or on the SPY email, spy at mirror.co.uk. Now, as I said before, our chief football writer, Martin Lipton, was at the game, which turned out to be a nice warm-up ahead of Croatia on Wednesday. He sent us this report. So, a great weekend for England, Scotland, and not a bad one for Northern Ireland and the Republic either. In fact, all told, pretty good weekend all round. And, of course, the real pressure for all the home nations is the looming games. Uh, must win in, in most cases, actually. England to beat Croatia, to qualify for the World Cup. Scotland, to have any chance, have to beat Holland. Uh, and then sneaking through as one of the better uh, runners-up. And Northern Ireland, having done all that hard work in Poland, need to do the same sort of job again um, when they play Slovakia on Wednesday. Win that one, and they've got a fantastic chance of qualifying. Um, over the weekend, it was about results more than performances, certainly for Scotland uh, and Northern Ireland particularly. They got points on the board they needed to get. England weren't that impressive, I don't think, against Slovenia. It doesn't matter, really. It's about getting things right on the big day on Wednesday against Croatia. All in all, though, a great weekend for, uh, for the British nations. Maybe we might get something good from Wales in midweek against Russia. I wouldn't count on it, though. Thanks, Martin. John Cross was with him on Saturday. And I asked John earlier if he would go for Heskey up front for the Croatia game or Defoe. I would stick with um, Heskey. I think Heskey brings more out of um, Stephen Gerrard, Frank Lampard, Wayne Rooney. I think his positioning, you know, and flip-ons and team play, it's not always about his end product, it's what he does for his teammates. Jermaine Defoe, I think, is in really great form at the moment and uh, undoubtedly ahead of Mike Ryan in, in, in the race for the World Cup squad. But at the moment, I still think that Emil Heskey's all-round play means that he starts ahead of Defoe. Now, just before we leave England, I want to know your views on who should start up from. Would you bring Defoe in with five goals in three England games, or would you stick with Heskey? Or maybe there's someone else that you'd bring in. Let me know what you think. You know how to do it by now. And in fact, it's time for your messages, because lots of you wanting your say on the tapping out allegations that we spoke about in uh, our show on Friday involving Chelsea. Sean the Man says, uh, just because tapping up is common, it doesn't mean Chelsea should be reprimanded for their actions. Mabino thinks the youth system is pointless here in England. He says, uh, if all the clubs just buy young foreign players and put them in their academies, then they can't complain when there aren't any quality English players being produced. And Montage Gaming says Chelsea's punishment could be a bit hard, but it could scare other clubs and prevent it happening in future. He goes on, I can't wait to see how Chelsea manage without being able to bring players in. How do you think they'll do without reinforcements? Is that the end of thy title challenge, or is Ancelotti canny enough to fight his way through it? Email me or post your views on YouTube. Our columnist, Stan Conimore, has got a few Arsenal fans' blood boiling with his views in his column this week. Uh, log on to mirrorfootball.co.uk to find out just why and to get involved in the debate. Very heated there. 
It's been a good weekend for the English and the Irish, but a mixed one for the Scots. They beat Macedonia on Saturday, but defeat to Holland on Wednesday will put them out of the World Cup and coach George Burley out of a job. A bit harsh in my opinion. I think the Scots perhaps need to accept that they just don't have the players. And I put that earlier to our chief sports writer, Oliver Holt. Yeah, I agree with I agree with that, Dale. I think it's slightly un, unfair on George Burnley, actually. I mean, I'm not a big fan of him. I think he's slightly past his sell bad as a manager. But um, I, I think second place in that group really is the best they could is the best they could hope for. And I think actually the way going into our last game um, is not such a, is not such a bad position for them given the resources at his disposal. Our chief sports writer Oliver Holt, who I spoke to a bit earlier. Now, one paper I didn't show you was the Daily Mirror, so let's make up for that now. It's got a great centre spread, basically saying that the two best players in the world, Ronaldo and Messi, as it stands, are very likely to miss out on going to South Africa. Argentina lost 3-1 to Brazil in the early hours of Sunday morning and need a win against Paraguay on Wednesday to breathe new life into their campaign. Portugal are fourth in their group and could only manage a 1-1 draw away to Denmark on Saturday. Here are the chaps and the big players who could be at the next, week, next year's World Cup. You want the World Cup to showcase the greatest talents on the planet. And yet, it's not inconceivable. In fact, it's pretty possible now that the two best players on earth, Leo Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo, will not be at the World Cup in South Africa next summer. That's pretty clear from the results over the weekend. Portugal, fourth in, in their group in qualifying, struggling now. Even if they win all three games that they have left, it won't be enough if Sweden pick up maximum points and Denmark win one of their last three. It's really tough. In South America, Argentina. Argentina, led by Diego Maradona, slumped to a horrendous 3-1 home defeat to Brazil. Every chance, if they lose to Paraguay on Wednesday, that they will be sixth with two matches to go. Not only out of the automatic qualifying places, but even out of a playoff against the fourth team in Central America and the North American CONCACAF region. That's how much pressure's on Maradona. If he was anybody other than Maradona, he'd be toast. He really would. You don't lose 3-1 at home to your pitch of his rivals, Brazil, in a supine performance like they did. That's the big problem for him. But as I said, a World Cup, no Me Messi, no Ronaldo. It's unthinkable. I think it needs the big teams because I think... You know, if England are going to win the World Cup, and obviously we go through this agony every four, four years, it really won't make. But I think we want them to beat the best teams, and the World Cup isn't just about England. And even though you know, we we thrill to the to the to the matches that England play, part of the whole World Cup experience of watching is watching the best players there, and you want Messi there, you want Ronaldo there. I think those are exactly the kind of players you want there. Obviously, you want England there. But we want, we want to be able to beat the best and say we've beaten the best if we've got a chance of winning the World Cup. No, I realise England's path would be easier uh, with two big nations gone. Um, but it would break my heart not to see the two best players in the world. And I, I think they're unquestionably not in Messi and Ronaldo. I think that the tournament has to have the best players. And it would be a real pale shadow of the tournament if Ronaldo and Messi were missing. I still fancy Argentina to get there, but it's also looking very, very grim for Portugal. Thanks, chaps. Now, just before we leave this subject, I've got a question for you. Would it be a bad thing or a good thing if the likes of Portugal and Argentina don't make it to South Africa next year? Personally, I like seeing the big teams in the big tournaments. I like to see the traditional group of death. I love it if we won the World Cup, beating the big teams along the way. But would you prefer to have the obstacles of Argentina and Portugal removed before the tournament even begins? Would you be happy about that? Let me know on YouTube or on the Spy email and if you're watching this in the UK remember you can pick up a bumper World Cup edition of our Mania pullout available every Monday in the Daily Mirror. Now every week we're going to have a new feature which we're going to use for the internationals as well as for the Premier League. It's called our very own pressure cooker. We'll tell you who is or who could be feeling the heat after the weekend's matches. This week obviously it's the Argentina coach Maradona. We've already talked about the Saturday night horror show against Brazil, which leave their qualification hopes in grave danger. Carlos Quiroz made a mess of the Real Madrid job, now he's making a mess of the Portugal job because it's hard to see how a side boasting the most expensive player in the world 
uh, it can be lagging behind the likes of Denmark and Hungary. What about the French coach, France coach Raymond Dominic? They look to be heading for the playoffs at best in Group 7. They visit leader Serbia on Wednesday. And although George Burley, as we said earlier, pulled off that great win against Macedonia, Holland going to be a very different proposition altogether on Wednesday night. If the Scots lose, we said it already, Burley will be out. I worry for him. On a lighter note, check out our 3pm column to find out why the Spurs defender Jonathan Woodgate should perhaps ease up on the loud parties at his penthouse flat in Canary Wharf. Also, why radio pundit Chris Waddle is hoping there are no penalties in the game against Croatia on Wednesday night. And also, why some fans are having some fun with Chelsea over their transfer window ban. Just to keep you up to date with how the African nations are doing in the World Cup qualifying. Tunisia are top of Group B. Nigeria failed to beat them at the weekend. Egypt and Cameroon both won away from home to keep their qualification hopes alive. And the Ivory Coast are a point away from qualification after crushing Burkina Faso 5 0. Ghana, of course, already there. Mania TV is back with a reaction from the Premier League next Monday. That's all for now. There's more MFTV for you tomorrow. We'll see you soon.